spring. Everything around begins to bloom and Mother Nature comes alive. But if you depend on Mother Nature for food, quite often you have no time to admire her beauty. You must plow, sow and fertilize, so in the autumn you can gather enough food to last all winter. Narco! Go get everybody. Tell them we're ready to plow the vegetable garden. What for? What do you mean, what for? So that we can plant the seeds. What for? Don't you know any other words? We all have to get ready for the harvest. We no. don't need that anymore, because now we live on the sun's rays. Only sun and Indian tea. Indian tea, Indian tea, everybody loves Indian tea. What's Indian tea? It's the sun's rays that give energy to all. I will soon be filled with glorious strength, much like a solar-powered battery. The only things I need are some vitamins, and they are all right here in this Indian tea. So now we all take a gulp. <sighs> and we don't need anything else. Except for a small piece of chocolate cake. Attention, people. Those who are not ready to be freed from the temptations of chocolate cake, banana cream pie, marshmallow s'mores, and other similar scourges can spend their lives alone with the evil of food. Hey, guys. If we miss the planting now, then when the fall arrives, our barns will be empty. We won't have any food to eat. Keep absorbing the sun's rays. I'll be right back. My friend, like you, I was once consumed by illusions and fears and obsessed with all the material pleasures in life. But one night I was watching a DVD. It was a beautiful movie from India, and I saw the light. But... Did you know Indians only grow tea? And they live in harmony. They spend the day dancing and singing songs. Everybody's happy and very content. Eh? So wonderful. You know why? Because they live on the sun and drink tea. Give me a piece of cake. I'm so hungry, I'm starting to see spots. This is a good sign, my dear. Have a little patience, and you'll experience a condition where you'll feel the most extraordinary levity. You'll forever free yourself from the burden of cakes, bagels, and pastries. Mm. Tea now! How do you feel, Rosa? Before I forever leave this world of illusion, there is something I must do. I feel the need to dance! Uh -huh. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme give more tea! Try, 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 try. Gimme, gimme, gimme so that I can be free. While my stomach's screaming at me, I will just be dreaming of tea. I would love a little Danish. How about a bite of Cornish? I'm so hungry. Won't you feed me? <laughs> oh, my love, your breath is like the wind blowing through a pomegranate tree. Your steps are no heavier than the whipped cream on a strawberry shortcake. Your lips are brighter than a cherry tart. My heart trembles like an empty fridge when you look at me. And when I see you, I forget everything that matters. I forget that I'm hungry. Carrot cake or coffee cake, even if it's lobster bake, I'm so hungry. Won't you feed me? Uh, winter's here. But what about the harvest? Oh. Did he pass out from hunger? 
No, he's just hibernating. He'll wake up next spring. Barry's really lucky he doesn't need to eat anything. He'll just suck on his paw. So what about us, Daco? Uh, this system works for India because it's always sunny. <laughs> Over there, they don't need to worry about winter time, storm clouds, snow. They have elephants to carry things. Oh, look! <sighs> Barry looks like he's smiling. Maybe he's dreaming of something delicious. No, he looks very happy. He's singing. <laughs> He's dreaming of India. Maybe we should eat him. Mm. Hmm? Morning, Daco. Back from your trip? I am indeed. And I brought you souvenirs. Here you go. This is a spade handcrafted by natives. Oh. And mm. an authentic tribal potato. Thanks. Oh, what's that? That is the symbol of the native Tupaka tribe. How'd you get it? What, did you join their tribe? Of course not. One cannot join the Tupaka. No one has ever even laid eyes on them. <laughs> then why'd you hang a smiley face on your neck? It's not a smiley... This is the traditional Tupaka calendar. Why do you need a calendar? Did you forget what month it is? No, it's not like a traditional calendar. I can't read it. Even the greatest cryptographers can't decipher these glyphs. Only the Tupaka can. <laughs> hey, if you can't read it, then why are you wearing it, huh? Uh, forgive me for saying so, my friend, but the wisdom of the Tupaka is bound to fly over your head. For instance, the Topaka believe that the world is a giant mole. We live on its back as it flies through space. Ah. Do you think the world is a mole? How should I know? I am nowhere near as enlightened as they about the nature of the world. The Topaka can see into your soul, and they can even talk to spirits. Hmm. Hey, does that mean you wear it so you can talk to spirits? Oh, goodness, Barry, fine. I wore it because it made me look sophisticated, okay? It's cool and so classy. I like the sandy color. See how it offsets the tan in my fur? It is so hard to find just the right shade of brown. That bear worries me. He asks far too many questions. I'll take care of him before sunrise. <laughs> what is that racket? Oh, it's too early for this. Um, did I forget to put out the campfire again? Let the smoke obscure your thoughts, soothe your mind, and <laughs> drift away. With hey, the wind. did Crash put you up to this? Stop asking so many questions. Rain of peas, rain That's of peas. That's enough. I draw the line at wasting peas. Oh. Oh. Chief, that bear is incredible. He's immune to my magic. My strongest spells made no difference. Hmm. This I must see for myself. Hmm. 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 Huh? 
Back at ya. Ah, uh, I see a familiar light in your soul. It is bright, it is strong, and it is clear. I recognize that light. You are a kindred soul of the Tupaka. Welcome to our tribe, brother. Huh. Just don't trample the herbs. Okay, okay. You really want to know why I wear this? It isn't just that it brings up my eyes, though that is part of it. It is because I am a worldly moose. I immerse myself in other cultures. If Tupaca culture becomes popular, everyone will know that I saw it first. My interest is genuine and not part of some trend. In a world full of cheap trinkets and superficialities, I am a deep thinker, consumed by the mysteries of the universe. This is a symbol that I am not one of the unthinking masses. There is such a stigma against those of us who get it. If you don't already get it, then I can hardly explain it to you. But I tried. <sighs> I did try, Barry. <sighs> <laughs> the world's a giant mole. It's been raining buckets for five days now. Native Americans used to say, it's raining from the moon crow's beak, which evolved into, it's raining buckets. The moon crow? What's that all about? Well, according to Native American legend, there is a great crow. He lives on the moon and grows stars in a sky garden. The moon crow waters the stars out of his beak so that they will grow nice and big. Whenever the water pours down onto the earth as rain, it's the work of the moon crow. If you ask me, that moon crow overwatered his garden. That's all really just a fairy tale. What in fact happens is water evaporates from the surface of the ocean and condenses into clouds. The clouds get further condensed into rain clouds. And from these rain clouds, water pours back down to earth as it is right now in the form of rain. It's a field of science called meteorology. It's widely accepted that everything in nature is interconnected. Things simply do not occur without some sort of reason. Every phenomenon can be traced to a specific catalyst. The science of meteorology is dedicated to studying catalysts of weather so as to predict... Predict what, you eagerly ask? The various weather phenomena we experience on Earth. So if a cyclone is moving this way, then that way, and we have an anti-cyclone here... Um, just put two down, carry the four, divide by half, and... Ah! Uh -huh! Guess what, friends? The end of the rain is in sight! Tomorrow we'll have sun! Oh! Really? We're talking about science here, and in science, we have the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the empirical truth. Didn't you tell us all yesterday that we would have sun today? Yes, 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 of course I did. But this little cloud spoiled everything. It was unexpectedly brought in by the wind, you see. What? This is no little cloud brought in by the wind. There have been nothing but huge gray clouds covering the entire sky for over a week. You are now inappropriately criticizing something you understand nothing about. We are talking meteorology. For example, you don't know anything about the factor of, um, the, uh, the factor of sails on sailboats. You see, wind gets into the sails, and that makes predictions difficult, because it causes boats to sail back and forth, back and forth, which fully disturbs the wind balance. 
And besides, we all know all forecasts have some degree of probability. In meteorology, this probability is equal to, um, to 50%. Uh, say what now? What that means is should a meteorologist predict that it will be sunny tomorrow, well then, quite naturally, it will either be sunny or, quite naturally, it won't be sunny, understand? <laughs> I've only seen the ritual once, but I remember it all to the tiniest detail. Native American culture is fascinating and full of wisdom. Here it is. Follow me. Here goes nothing. So, this ritual will begin with a salute to the moon crow. Oh, moon crow, who, um, tends to the stars in the sky. Um, well, something like that. Hey, uh, hey, your stars are really quite beautiful. Hey, uh, hey. That we're unable to see them. Hey, uh, hey, because the sky is covered with dark clouds. Hey, uh, hey, 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 uh, hey, hey, uh, hey. Oh, moon crow, stop bordering the stars and take a rest already. Hey, uh, hey, wouldn't it be so extremely nice if we could possibly admire their beauty together? Hey, uh, hey, hey. Enough! Uh, That's hey. quite enough hey, of all that. Uh, hey. Stop this nonsense. Hey, moon crow. Hey. This is hey, not at all hey, scientific! Hey, hey. Carlin! Oh, Moon Crow! Make it Think stop what you're raining. teaching our youth! Hey, please make it hey, stop! Hey, stop it! That's enough of this! Hey, make this is not stop. okay! Oh, so, hey, would hey, you listen? Hey, I'm literally holding hey, the data right hey, here! Hey, hey, hey! I have the data right here. It proves conclusively that it will be raining mm. for the next 46, no, 47 hours or so. Oh, All right, awesome. finally. <laughs> I'm so grateful. This can't, no, no, this can't be happening. This, it, it has to, to, to be a mere coincidence. One thing I learned, meteorology is not my thing. Ugh, it takes way too much energy. Here we go. <clears throat> hey, uh, hey, hey, uh, hey. Oh, oh, moon crow. Arrange for the weather to please be roughly 30 degrees warmer tomorrow. Uh, hey, uh, hey, hey, uh, uh. No, no. Moon crow has nothing at all to do with the temperature. There's a very old Native American legend about fiery rabbit. It says she lives in the sun and controls temperature. Fiery rabbit lives in the sun. <laughs> like I always say, live and learn. Uh, one more thing. Should the tambourine be held in the left hand? Or, or maybe it doesn't matter which hand? What do you mean it doesn't matter? Meteorology happens to be an exact science. Let's go with left. Hmm. <laughs> It's a weed. It's as weedy as a weed can get. No, no, listen, my agrarian friend. You don't understand. I have to know exactly what it's called. Well, it hasn't got a name. A weed. Just a weed, that's all. Is that the scientific method, my good man? Let me explain, my naive friend. Everything in nature has a name. It's absolutely impossible for something not to. Without a name, how would we know what things are? <laughs> <gasps> Diameter 25 and 70 centimeters. Height 350 centimeters. Incredible! Okay, now. To show its proportions... There. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Taproot, fibrous root. Maybe it's this one. 40 centimeters. No, that's not right. It seems I've discovered a plant currently unknown to science. Darko! Hey, Darko! Should I go ahead and get rid of this weed for you? No, don't touch it! It is a species utterly unknown to science. It must be thoroughly examined. Well, you know best. Just thought I'd ask. Let me know if you change your mind. <gasps> Phenomenal! 
Testing, testing. By the evening of the first day, the specimen has grown 40%. Not to mention it... it... it glows. Hey, Darko! Darko! Uh, uh, hey, I was on my way to see you. I thought I'd see if you'd reconsider the whole growing weeds thing. I can help you get rid of those thorns. Oh, yeah! Look at these sprouts I brought you. They're rose turnips. Cross-pollinated them myself, both beauty and substance. <sighs> well, ain't that a stinger? What are you watering it with? What kind of fertilizer do you usually use, my good man? Uh, mostly compost, but superphosphate also works pretty good, too. Just a second. Let me write that down. But isn't it just weed? You know, I mean, a good-for-nothing weed? Wait, what do you mean, good-for-nothing? It glows at night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, if it glows, then that's a different story now, isn't it? He's totally crazy, seeing glowing weeds and all. On the second night, the specimen not only emitted light waves, but unusual sound waves as well, reminiscent of music of the great Viennese composers. Utter nonsense. <laughs> Members of the Nymphalidae family were attracted to the light. They proceeded to gather in ring-like formations, moving around in rhythmic harmony <laughs> that appeared to look somewhat like dancing. Like dancing? What rubbish! Peak happiness was reached when the observed connection between music and light was in the middle of the radio spectrum. Though it looked and sounded interesting, it's just not possible. It can't possibly be happening! Completely impossible. That's it. It's just... <gasps> Darko! Darko! Yeah. I did it. I dug it up. That's good. You done really good. <laughs> it was unscientific. It was just impossible. Of course it wasn't scientific. Weeds are unscientific by nature. Let's plant you some hybrid plants, and then everything will be nice and scientific, just like you like it. Hmm. <laughs> building, Barry? <laughs> a greenhouse. I'm making it for my plants. Uh, can we... Come in. 
It may be chilly outside, but it's nice and toasty in here. Even plants that normally can't survive the winter will be able to grow really nice inside. Huh. I see. So you agree with us? It's way too cold for anyone to survive out there. Uh, well, that's our climate. We're not in Africa. All I can do is heat this teeny-weeny space so my plants live to see spring. <sighs> huh? <laughs> if only we lived in Africa. Yeah. <laughs> But why? Is your heater busted? No, but the world's heater is busted. I'm freezing my fur off. <sighs> ah, it's winter. It's supposed to be cold. It doesn't have to be. Check this out. <laughs> we'll make your furnace pump hot water through these pipes. That'll melt the snow and presto, instant summer. Everyone's happy. I call it Project... Uh, Africa. You may now applaud. We don't have enough firewood. What do you call that forest back there? Come on, Pin. It's time you saw the forest for the trees. It's genius. Stand with us. No, thanks. I was looking forward to skiing all summer. Long. I like summer as much as the next guy, but winter is a wonderful season, too. You should appreciate the winter while it lasts. Right. You won't be saying that once the frost kicks in. <laughs> trees <laughs> it's too cold let's take a break <laughs> okay you win we need more wood more wood more wood time to get more wood <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's finally spring. We won't need as much wood to keep our little Africa warm. That's good. I feel like all I did this winter was harvest firewood. Oh. <sighs> Whoa. 
we cut them all down. It's a desert. Hmm. Like Africa. Just a little sodium bromide, add a little hydrogen peroxide, maybe a touch of calcium. Wait, wait, this might work. Add a little of this mixture, <laughs> and this right into the mixture too. And some rubber cement for strength. Daco, I need to use your shower. Uh, not right now. Hmm. What you doing? Trying to make invisible thread. Think about it. How useful would it be in tailoring clothing items and not needing to worry about visible seams? Won't it be great? And I'm terrible at sewing. Hmm. Not quite invisible yet, but I'm close. <gasps> you know what? A bit of iron might do it. That. Nothing, it's fine. Holy carrots. Huh? Huh? Well, I'm out of here. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Something. Yeah, me. Yeah, a talking ball. No. I can't believe nobody uh, let me use their shower. Mm. Surely it don't smell that bad. I mean, I'm trying to mm. fix the problem. Uh. Chico, taking a nap. <laughs> huh. Holy carrots! Sheets on a nice day, hanging the... Hey, Olga. I'm hearing voices. I need help. Huh. Eat something weird? Pears count? Yeah. Word of uh. warning, you guys. Rosa doesn't like to share. Uh. Uh. Let's lay off the pears and eat something else for a while. Tell me, Crash, how did this happen? Beats me. I went to Daco's after playing soccer to use his shower, and he was doing sciencey stuff, like always. And I might have fallen into something. <gasps> hey, wait! He said he was making invisible thread! <gasps> <laughs> nope. No more pears. <sighs> Phenomenal stuff. Now I'll get the Nobel Prize for certain. I thought we could turn him back to normal first. Yeah, do that. Not so hasty. This is a huge breakthrough, and we should run at least a few hundred tests first. Oh, I didn't come here to take tests. I'm a terrible test taker. Come on, make me visible again or I'll... I'll... I don't know, run away and you'll never get your Nobel Prize thingy. That's no way to behave when I'm the only one who can get you back. <laughs> Listen here, you belong to science now. <laughs> get down here. Now are we clear? Yes, I am clear. That's the problem. <laughs> 
I'm sure we can work something mm -hmm. out. This is an achievement. Surely you understand. You'll be in textbooks for the next millennia. They'll make uh. statues in your likeness. Well, before you became invisible, otherwise that'd be an easy statue. Oh, <laughs> what's this? <gasps> I appear to be floating somehow. Phenomenal stuff. This is, this is amazing. Now that Nobel Prize is mine for sure. Oh my, come on, we have to get a photograph of this. Do you have a camera we can borrow for a short moment? No. 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 I know, right? We're impressive. Let's take it while the sun's still out. My crops are all tainted now. What did I do? You're cold. Getting colder. Getting warmer. Even warmer. Cold. <laughs> warm. Really warm. Oh, hot, hot! So hot you could fry an egg on your forehead. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I think mm -hmm. something's wrong with my head. I turned mm -hmm. into a goof. Of course it is, because you just hit it. I think I feel goofy. Chico, don't mm -hmm. say silly things like that. I'll take you to the doctor now, and you'll see that you've always been goofy. <laughs> Maybe I hit my brain's off switch. <laughs> or maybe the opposite. Maybe your brain went into hyperspeed and you know a gazillion more things than you did before. I <laughs> can't think of a gazillion more things. Don't worry, they're in there. <laughs> your brain is in overdrive, which is pretty cool since you don't actually drive in the first place. You're like the eighth wonder of the world, but with that brain, you'll be up to number one in no time. There's no problem you can't solve. Chico, look. Think you can fix that bike? Yeah. Um, uh, um. What did he say? Don't interrupt. Uh, yeah? Yeah? Uh, you... Replace the axle? Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Replace the transmission? Yeah. I don't know. That's incredible. Uh, uh, done. Hmm? It's all clear. <laughs> no sign of concussion. At all. <laughs> well, he could have told you that. We just want to know if Chico's new brain power is dangerous to him. Mm -hmm. hmm? What is he saying? <laughs> he says that your cosmic aura is pulsating with blue light. Oh, Eat more fruits and vegetables. It'll clear you right up. Well, no, that's not what I wanted to ask. I wanted to say, why is Crash the only one that understands me? Isn't it clear? It's because I'm your best friend. Mm -hmm. Well, I may be just as smart as Chico is, but Chico has someone who knows his every thought. I don't. It's because you don't have any thoughts. Chico! Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> if one is going to be smart, then one should appear smart. I was currently planning to plant currant bushes in the whole yard, but then I decided to add a few bushes of raspberries. What you think? <laughs> Chico says that here, here, and here, you should plant only one thing. And that's carrots. Plant carrots? <laughs> Lots of carrots. No, Crash, not carrots. Cacti is what you should plant. Chico, 
know. I know you better than however it is you think you know yourself. Plant carrots. You know, you're supposed to read my thoughts, not make them up. Curtises, mm. mm. small green ones. Mm. Uh, 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 crash, explain mm. it. Fine, just go away then. Mm. I don't need you. I'll find a way to tell people my own thoughts. Besides, when you told them, you used the wrong words. First, you made me dependent on your taste. And now when I ask you what to wear, all you can say is, Huh? Hmm? <laughs> okay, I don't get it. What should I put in? The Hawthorne or the chamomile? <laughs> Chico, mm -hmm. was it the cactus or the carrots? <laughs> no, no, no more. No more questions. I, I know nothing, nothing. I don't want to be the smartest one. I don't want to. I'll just hit my head again, and everything will go back to the way it was. <laughs> Being smart isn't all that intelligent. <laughs> Chico, we shouldn't have argued. We have to help the others together. Okay, you do the thinking just like before, and then I... We'll translate. We can tell the others what your thoughts are. Except I don't have any. Yes, Chico, you do. I know better. <laughs> then why are you the only one who hears them? Because I'm your best friend, you goofy guy. <laughs> Crash. What did I just say? The end. Wow, that's right. The tropical vortex coming up the coast is going to give us a little light cloud cover and with some occasional showers, which of course will be good news for our horticulturalists and vegetable patches. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, horse tourists and girdlers. No, no. Horticulturists and gardeners. <laughs> oh boy, did that get away from me. Elsewhere, we're going to be feeling a little light winds and maybe carrying a little pollen from that storm for you allergy sufferers. But otherwise, you can expect plenty of sunny skies in perfect conditions. So, Professor, you're telling me that harvest from vegetable patches will contain more vitamins and minerals if the cultivated plants are kept safe and separate from those pervasive, savage little weeds? What is that? Oh, brother, I'm growing a vegetable patch here, not a flower garden. Absolutely right. And what is a weed? Populus vita? It's a plant. Wild. A corruption in every respect. Ah, oh, Professor, how right you are. Ah, oh, now isn't that beautiful? Chico, would you rather have a few carrots right this very moment or be in a good mood for the remainder of the summer? What would you choose? That's easy. I choose the good mood, of course. It's been decided. Chico has refused his portion of the carrot yield and gifts them to his best friend, Crash. And would you rather have a few apples or... <laughs> Apples, lots of them. Oh. Uh. Oh. Oh. Hey, Barry, why would you plant the entire garden with flowers? What are we supposed to eat now? It's not me, I promise. It's the weeds. Ivy's eating up the whole, the whole crop. Oh. Okay, weeds. Watch out. There will be a reckoning for the crop you stole. <laughs> now it's time for weightlifting exercises. Pick up your weights. Up, down, up, down. Remember to breathe. Your arms are light, yes? One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. This concludes our daily exercise. What if they're not weeds at all? but some special kind of crop. We could be rich! And what if it's poisonous? <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, I'll be right back! 
Let's run! <laughs> of course it's poison. It's ivy. We're continuing our broadcast with music by request. It's a solution of my own design. It's harmless for cultivated plants, but these unruly weeds won't be able to stand it. where you're spraying. The solution is harmless for cultivated plants. It only affects unruly pests. Uh, uh, somebody help me. <laughs> See, the weeds are only continuing to spread, growing stronger, more impudent, in a word. Uncultivated. There's a theory that we're all doomed to return to a primal state. Oh, it's back. Give me just a second. I'll be right back. <laughs> whoa, whoa. It's so windy up here. The next shot got our airwaves. They're being inflated. Oh, very help. Huh? Huh? Chico? Chico! Let go! Let go! You uncultivated! Very! I'm coming! I'm climbing! Here I come! I'm coming, Chico! Especially for the farmers! Gotcha! Yeah, gotcha! Our broadcast. No, oh. it's the apotheosis. Oh. Chico, Barry, where are you going? We really need to get down somehow. I won't allow it. Come back, guys. Oh. Oh. You guys, you're in trouble. What? Oh, your house. Oh. Your wheelbarrow. Oh, the the harvest. harvest. Receives the pass and slips to the left. To the right. He's unstoppable as he... Touchdown! The seeds of that weed are kind of good. They're tasty. Oh, yeah. I'll be right back. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'll just... Uh, uh, oh. <sighs> the world, it's so beautiful, so bright. But when I close my eyes, everything suddenly disappears. <laughs> so I was thinking about why that keeps happening like that. I've come up with the only possible explanation. This world only exists as we know it, in my imagination. You're telling me all this nonsense again just so I'll sit on the swing with you. Admit it! The swing is just one small component that is in this universe, all thanks to me. Whoa! Oh, horse feathers! I suppose you're saying you created me too? For your information, I'm real as pie. What about you? Are you saying you're not real either? How does that work? Well, of course I have to be real. This was all my idea. Okay, fine, whatever. I don't care. I'm tired of it. <sighs> Say whatever you like, but keep one thing in mind. You are only able to exist as long as you stay within my sight. Manage to exist without you then, huh? Apparently, you need proof to be convinced of this. All right, fine. <laughs> oh, holy carrots. Holy carrots! 
Phenomenal. Phenomenal! <laughs> <laughs> no! Well, ain't that a stinger? Well, ain't that a stinger? <laughs> There's so much going on around here. Um, I mean, how could you have created all this? It wasn't that difficult, actually. Our valley, the ocean, the desert, mountains. Plus the nine of us here. Including my own physical appearance. Everyone is rather predictable, which doesn't say a whole lot about me, either. Uh, but what about me? Am I predictable? Just like the others? You could create more dresses for me! Why do you always make me wear the same clothes? The whole world revolves around me. The images come and go, but me, I stay the same. Everything exists only while in my sight. And so, if I decide to close my eyes, it all disappears. Rosa! Rosa! Hey, 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 Rosa, come on, hurry. We want to show you something. I can't right now. Can't wait till later. No, come on, it'll only take a minute. That's it. We're all gonna disappear right now. And exactly why is that? You just don't understand. This world only exists in Wally's imagination. It's not real. The second any of us are out of his sight, then we disappear. We don't exist. Actually, we haven't seen Wally around for a long time. Maybe he disappeared. Like he doesn't exist. All right, Wally. Rosa is having fun playing with a ball. As soon as I pass by, she will no longer be there. But I will keep on walking and walking and walking and... Hmm. Rosa! 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 I don't understand. Why did we play a trick on Wally like that? <laughs> Well, sometimes even the creator has to be put in his place showing off like that. Rosa! 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 I suddenly realized that it's actually you. You created everything here. Me, them, all of it. This world is really yours. Forgive me, please. I was so wrong. Listen, when you told me all that stuff before that nothing existed before me, I knew that I was the one. Anyways, if you don't want to just disappear, then you gotta remember to stay in my sight. <laughs> I should have planted by now, but I'm not even close to being done digging. Don't think I can do it before it rains by myself. Well, old friend, you know that I'm always happy to help out. It's just right now I have, um, uh, uh, lower back pain. Ugh, I tell you, it's awful. Don't worry, don't worry. Just sit and relax. Look at those kids running around. 
Go ask them. I don't think that's a good idea. Mm. Oh, what the heck. I'll give it a try. What's the worst that can happen? Hey, you two! Come give an old bear a paw. I can use some help. So what do you say? Later, later. We can't help now. Check this out. I can't believe we found it. It lets you know where to dig for buried treasure. It also tells you if other cool stuff is buried. First we're gonna find and dig out all the treasure around here. Then we'll come and help. <sighs> what a big waste of time. Hmm. Hmm? I know what to do. You should tell them you've got treasure buried in your garden. What? Just tell them that you've got treasure buried in your vegetable garden. They'll dig and dig and be done with it all. But I don't think there's any treasure, so wouldn't that be a lie? It's nothing to worry about. It's for a good cause. Tell them. One thing I don't get. How'd you come to think something's buried here? Uh, uh, well, I... Uh, 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 Carlin? I'm afraid we are not at liberty to disclose our information source. Hmm? There's nothing here. Are you sure? Beep! Beep, beep, beep. Ah, what? Look at that. Huh, beep, very beep, interesting. Beep. Give me the shovel. Hey, the two of you are digging far too deep. You need to dig much wider instead. The treasure is hidden, uh, I think, somewhere closer to the surface. I do feel bad lying to them. It's not very nice. Just stop worrying about it, will you? Those two would be digging anyway, but only in the wrong spot. At least now they're digging in the right spot. There! Let's dig here. Huh? Well, I'll be stung by a bee. Hmm. Could it be that they actually found something here? Oh, you gotta be more careful. There's an excavation underway here, in case you forgot. This is not a good sign. Mamma mia! This might be from the 17th century. Or maybe the 13th. Terrific. But where's the treasure? You must be kidding me. You really don't understand. This here is the treasure. Uh, okay, but what are we going to do with it? We'll build a museum in this spot. Yes, then we could attract tourists here and overcharge them. Guys, Ooh. come on! Don't you think you're getting carried away with this talk of the museum? Just take what you want and bury the rest. I need to start planting now. My dear friend, you don't get it. There's no way it can be dug up and brought somewhere else. Believe me, the museum must be right here. That's right. And we can make Barry's little house a coat room. Hmm? We'll rent overpriced slippers to the tourists. And tickets, too. Oh, my goodness. Just look what I started by lying. Why did I say there's treasure here? Can you please quit all that worrying of yours? It turns out you did tell the truth. Mm. How about you dig over there? Only this time, do it more carefully. That's not carefully! What the? What's happening now? That's some luck. Your whole house just sank. You know what? You're a really lucky bear. Just try and imagine it. 300 years in the future and someone's having a ton of fun digging out your home. Nah, 300 years is too short. But in 700 years, this shack... Oh, but forgive me. What I had meant to say was this house will be of tremendous value in terms of archaeological significance once it's unearthed. 
I bet it'll be turned into a museum. Oh, and then we'll rent slippers to tourists. Oh, goodness. I didn't take the trash out today. Why didn't you warn me? I would have cleaned the place up a bit. If they actually excavate, they'll find an enormous mess, and they'll think the previous owner was a... Oh, I'll positively die of embarrassment. <laughs>